So why do we actually need adjustment screws on carburettors? Well, let's take air density for example. Let's say we adjusted a two-stroke carburettor in the winter. In the winter, the air is going to be more dense. So if we're going to meet the correct ratio of air to fuel, we'll need a greater amount of fuel to come out of the main jet because we've got more air molecules going into the engine. So a greater volume of air means a greater amount of fuel is required to get that air to fuel mix just right for the engine to run at its best. So we've screwed out the adjustment screws to allow quite a lot of fuel out to meet the dense air requirements and now it comes to summer. But in summer where the air is warmer, warmer air is less dense. So there's less air molecules coming through the induction tube of the carburettor and into the engine. But because we adjusted those screws outwards to allow a lot of fuel out when the air was much denser, now we could have a situation where we've got too much fuel coming out to air ratio. Therefore it's supplying the engine with too much fuel and the engine will be running too rich. So in this case we will need to screw in the screw clockwise slightly to restrict some of that fuel to meet the air requirements coming into the engine for that particular time of year with that air density. And of course it's vice versa. If we set this carburettor in the summer time with air that's less dense than in the winter time when the air is more dense there may be too little amount of fuel for the greater amount of air entering the engine. So we might have to screw this screw out to allow more fuel up for that time of year. And it's pretty much the same with altitude. If we set our carburettor up here at sea level, then there'll be a certain amount of air density here at sea level that we can set the carburettor up for. But if we go to higher altitude, let's say we climb to the top of a big hill or a mountain, of course the higher up we go, the less dense the air. So again, there's less air molecules coming into the engine. So we have to adjust the amount of fuel to suit the amount of air coming into the engine at that altitude. So if we set the carburettor up at the top of this mountain with less air density so we have to lean up the fuel slightly to stop it getting too rich and then we bring it down to sea level it may be the case that because of the increased volume of air now because we've got a greater density at sea level that the engine could be running too lean. So we'd have to screw the screws out anti-clockwise to allow more fuel pass to meet the air requirements to get that air to fuel mix ratio just so for the engine to run at its best. Another reason is the quality of fuel itself. If it's great quality fuel and it's new and it's highly combustible, then we only need a certain amount of fuel to come out of the main jet for the engine to run well. But if the fuel is of a substandard or it's going stale, then smaller amounts of this less combustible, less quality fuel coming out of the main jet to the engine won't allow the engine to run too well. So we might find ourselves screwing the screws outwards anti-clockwise to allow a little more fuel up to help the combustion process and help the engine to run the best it can under those conditions. But of course it probably won't run brilliantly anyway no matter what we do if the fuel quality is poor. Another common reason for needing to adjust the carb adjustment screws is the air filter. So the air filter is designed to let through a good supply of air through to the engine but to filter out the impurities. So let's say we've got a new air filter on a machine. It's going to let through a maximum amount of air that it can do and so we need to make sure that that fuel adjuster screw is screwed out to allow enough fuel to come out to meet that maximum air requirement to again make the ratio of air to fuel at its best to make the engine run at its best. So we've now adjusted the screws outwards to allow a sufficient amount of fuel into this maximum airflow but when this air filter over time starts to clog up, there's less airflow coming through the induction tube of the carburettor. But the screw is still set to allow a greater amount of fuel through. So now we've got a situation where there's too much fuel to air ratio and the engine may well run too rich. So in this situation, we would screw in the screw slowly, reducing the amount of fuel coming out of the main jet to make the ratio of air and fuel much better for the engine again. Of course if the filter is too blocked then it needs to be changed. What I'm trying to say here is that we can make adjustments to the carburettor when the air filter starts to accumulate debris and try to get the engine running as best as we can under those conditions. And so now let's look at the other side of the coin. If we've adjusted the carburettor to allow a certain amount of fuel through whilst the air filter was partially blocked 
so there'd be a certain amount of air restriction coming through the carburettor, meaning that we would have to screw in the fuel screw slightly to lean out the fuel so there isn't too much fuel to air ratio, and then we put on a new air filter. We've got to remember that this carburettor has been set for more of a partial amount of air through to the engine, and now it's got a maximum flow of air, there will be too much air to fuel ratio, and so the engine may run lean. And so what we need to do now is unscrew the adjustment screw slowly outwards until the engine starts to sound a little better. Another reason we need adjustment screws on carburettors is the fuel filter. Of course the fuel filter is there to filter any impurities out of the fuel. But over time as that fuel filter starts to collect debris, thus not allowing the maximum flow through, then for a time, at least in the early stages of this, we can use the carburettor settings to compensate. So if we've set the adjustment screws to compensate for having a restricted flow of fuel through the fuel filter to get the engine running as best as it possibly can under those circumstances, and then at some stage we have a new fuel filter fitted where there's now a maximum flow of fuel coming through to the carburettor, then because we adjusted that fuel screw, turning it outwards to try and get more fuel up into the carburettor when the filter was blocked, then it may well now be far too open, allowing too much fuel in, because we have a better flow of fuel. So it could mean that the engine is running rich, so we just need to screw the screw back in slowly whilst listening to the engine until the engine runs better. Another quite common reason we might need to adjust the carburettors is in the early stages of engine wear. Because in the early stages before the engine wear gets too bad, we can actually make adjustments to the carburettor to help the engine run as well as we can under those circumstances. So for example, let's say there's wear to the crankshaft's main bearings. These bearings make sure that the crankshaft is running completely straight as it turns. And if these bearings are warm, then the crankshaft starts to move up and down as it turns, pushing in to the main seals. And so as it pushes into the seals, it creates a pressure on them and wears them out. Because a two-stroke engine relies on crankcase compression for its function, when these seals get worn out, as the piston lowers, that pressure escapes out through the seals, and as the piston rises, extra air enters the crankcase in this unnatural place due to the suction pressure behind the piston caused by its rising and leans out the air-to-fuel mix. So now we've got a situation where there's too much air to fuel ratio, and so the engine will not run at its best. So when this gets too bad, there's nothing we can do with the engine. It needs to be stripped down and new parts fitted. However, in the early stages of this happening, we can make adjustments to the carburettor to counteract this effect. In fact, in the early stages, this effect is so subtle that often we don't actually know that it's the main seals causing the problem. We just set about adjusting the carburettor. And the way we do that is we turn the screws outwards like we do before, richening up the amount of fuel coming out of the carburettor to make it so we've got a better fuel to air ratio mix. And again, for a time, this rectifies the problem as much as it can possibly be rectified. Another problem that can occur that can cause these same type of symptoms is when the inlet boot is split, allowing air into the system here in this unnatural place. Also, if the carburettor is slightly loose, allowing air in here on the opposite side of the carburettor before it's pulled the air in past the main jet, that can also cause this kind of problem. But what I want to know is what do you think? Do you know any other reasons why carburettors need adjusting? The community that reads these comments learns such a lot from everybody's point of view and everybody's knowledge who actually make comments here on this channel. And so I really respect all your comments. As always, it's been a pleasure explaining this. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.